Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from toptipbio.com and in this video tutorial I will show you how to create a volcano plot in PRISM. So a volcano plot is a type of scatter plot that is used to plot large amounts of data such as RNA-seq data as shown in the example on screen. Here over 15,000 genes have been analysed, with each data point indicating a different gene. The x-axis depicts the log fold change, and the y-axis shows the negative log false discovery rate, or FDR. The genes that are at the top of the graph are those with the lowest adjusted p-value, which is shown as a higher negative log FDR value. In other words, these are more significant than those at the bottom of the graph. Genes that are upregulated are plotted to the right side of the graph, indicated with a positive log fold change value. And on the other hand, genes that are downregulated are plotted on the left side of the graph, indicated with a negative log fold change value. The genes that are coloured red and are above the grey horizontal line are those that are above the significance threshold, which is set at FDR less than 0.01. In this video tutorial I will show you how I created this volcano plot. So let's go into PRISM and begin the video tutorial. So to start with I'm going to select an XY table and graph. I'm going to enter import data into a new table. My X values are going to be numbers. My Y values I'm going to enter and plot a single Y value for each point. And I'm going to click the create button. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to paste in the data that I've prepared previously. So this data comes from a Galaxy Project training document created by Maria Doyle. And specifically, it is an RNA-seq data set from the Nature Cell Biology paper by Fu et al. 2015. In total, there are 15,804 genes in this data set from an experiment using mice. In the row titles column, this represents the gene symbols. The X column represents the log 10 fold change. And in the first Y column, this represents the negative log 10 of the adjusted P values. In this case, the adjustment was done using the false discovery rate or FDR. This data set is sorted in descending order so that those genes with the smallest P values are at the top. So in other words, those that have the largest negative log value. So next, I will go to the connected graph sheet and select to plot an XY graph with points. And the connected graph sheet can be found on the left-hand window. So the type of graph we want to plot is the first option under the XY graph family. We want to select the points only option. And I'm going to click the OK button. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to shift where the Y axis begins. Currently, the Y axis is set at X equals zero. But obviously this is being obscured because there are so many data points on the graph. So what we want to do is to shift the y-axis to be in the lower left corner. To do this, I will click on the Form Axes button at the top, and under the Frame and Origin tab, where it says Set Origin, I'm going to change this from Automatically to be Lower Left, and then click the OK button to return to the graph. So now the y-axis begins at x equals negative 10, and we can now see all of the data points on the graph. But on the topic of the data points, you will notice that because there are so many data points on the graph, and a lot of them are overlapping considerably, it's very hard to see how many data points we have. And it's quite difficult to get around this, but to make it a bit easier to visualise the data points, we can in fact make the data points a bit smaller. And to do this, I will go to the Format Graph button at the top. And what I'm going to do is change the symbol size from 4 to be 1, which is the smallest size that we can possibly do. So I'll click the OK button to return to the graph. So notice now that the data points are considerably smaller than we had when we first started. And we can actually see a lot more of the data points now compared to before. Another thing that you may wish to do with a volcano plot especially when you're using RNA-seq data, is to change the colour of certain points above and beyond a desired significance threshold. So in the case of RNA-seq data, it is common to highlight those that are above this threshold. 
And a common significance threshold when using RNA-seq data is when the false discovery rate is less than 0.01. Since our y-axis has been log transformed, a false discovery rate of 0.01 will equal a negative log 10 value of 2. So in this example, we can say that any genes that have a negative log false discovery rate value greater than 2 are defined as statistically significant. And we want to make these data points a different color on the volcano plot compared to those that are below the threshold. Now to do this, what we want to do is to go back to the data sheet. And what we need to do is to highlight those values that we want to change the color of. Now in this example, it's going to be those that have a negative log false discovery rate value that is greater than two. So obviously because this is in descending order, I'm going to click on the first row because this is the one with the highest value. And I'm going to scroll down until I find those data points that are greater than two. So you see the cutoff here in row 1610. This is the first gene that has a negative log FDR value that is greater than two. Anything below this is below this threshold. So with the top row selected, I'm going to hold the shift button and click on the last row that I want to highlight all of the rows in between. And to change the appearance of these points in PRISM, you can either right click and go to format points, or you can click on the change color of selected data button at the top, which can be found here. So now we could change the symbol color to be a red color. So I'm going to change this to be this red here. So now all of these data points will be a red color as opposed to the other data points which will remain in a black. You can also right click and then go to format points, symbol color and change the color from here if you so wish. So let's go back to the graph sheet, see how this has changed. So now notice that all of those data points above that threshold, which is a Y value of two, are now colored in red. So next, I'm just going to tweak the Y axis a little bit by going to the Format Axes button at the top. And then I'm going to go to the left Y axis tab. And what I want to do is I'm going to change where the major tick points occur. And I'm going to untick the automatically determine the range and interval. And instead, I'm going to set my own where the maximum value is going to be 12. And the major tick interval, I'm going to change from five to be two. So every two points on the Y axis will be labeled. Then I'm going to click the OK button to see the change. So now notice that the Y axis has been reduced slightly and it's making good use of that white space that was there before. So another thing that you may wish to do in a volcano plot, either as well as changing the color of certain points or as an alternative to changing the color, is to add a horizontal line to signify that threshold. So for example, I could add a line at y equals two to show the divide between non-significant and significant genes. And to do this, I'm gonna go back to the format graph button at the top, and then I'm going to toggle to the left y axis, and then at y equals two, I'm going to enter a line, and I'm going to click the apply button to preview my changes. So now notice there is a line that is being entered at y equals two, and this is a dotted line. However, I personally would change the appearance of this line since the dotted line could get confused with the individual data points or genes plotted on the graph. Now to change the appearance of the line, you click the three dots under the details header, and here you can change the appearance in terms of the style, as well as the color and the thickness of this line. So I'm going to change the color of the line to be a light gray, and I'm also going to change the style from being a dotted line to being a solid line. I'm going to click the OK button. And then I'm going to click the OK button again to return back to the graph. So notice now that this is our significance threshold and all of the genes that are above this line or threshold are colored in red and those that are below this threshold are colored in black. A final thing that you may wish to do, especially in volcano plots showing RNA-seq data, is to label some of the data points with the gene names. For example, you may want to label the top 10 genes, i.e. those with the highest negative log FDR values. Now to do this, I'm gonna go back to the connected data sheet 
And then what you want to do is to find the genes that you want to label on the graph. So for the purposes of this example, I will just select the first three genes. So these are the three genes with the highest significance values. To add the labels of these genes onto the graph, you can either right click on them and then go down to format points and then show row titles or at the top on the unlinked graph change the color of the selected data you can select this and then go to show row titles so i've done this and if i go back to the graph you will now see that some of the data points the three most significant genes in this example have been labeled with their row title the gene name now to finish off the graph what i'll do is quickly just change the title of the graph to be rna seq volcano plot and that is the finished volcano plot so in this video tutorial you have learned how to create a volcano plot in prism and a volcano plot is a type of scatter plot that is used to plot large amounts of data such as rna seq data specifically volcano plots are useful to show statistical significance usually an adjusted p-value like the false discovery rate versus the magnitude of change which is usually the fold change did you like this video be sure to give it a like or leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when a new video is added